Good morning. Still morning my time here. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. King James Version, commonly called. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 5. I may be uploading two videos today. I may. We'll see. Uh, the, the Lord plainly made it, uh, made it aware to me that one video a day, instead of doing... Um, throwing out like three or four videos in one day that that's just not um not helpful um and uh besides like i said the lord would have me to do it a uh, video a day when he has me to do a video might be the exception for today because um what we're going to look at is going to be actually rather simple and i'm going to be quoting um other sources uh that i have here but 1 John chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 18, on to the close of the chapter. John chapter 5, verses 18, on to the close of the chapter. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Now, being born of God, the reference here is being born again. When you come to the Lord broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, you cry out, you call upon the name of the Lord for his mercy, and he saves you, you are born again, you are converted, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? So, when he says born of God sinneth not okay he's making reference on to the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit that is uh, that is in those who are of the church of the living God because when you go to 1st John chapter 3 verse 9 it says whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin and those who, who say that you gotta stop sinning will come to this and say, See? If you're of God, you wouldn't sin anymore. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Keep reading. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Semicolon, colon, continuing the train of thought within the sentence. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. The seed that is in you as the church of the living God is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not going to lead you on to sin. Do you got that? Um, I, I cover this. I have covered this in several videos, um, to be honest with you, okay? But... When you, are, when you come to the Lord on His terms and He saves you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you. That is what John is referring to. The Holy Ghost within you will not sin. The Holy Ghost within you is not going to lead you into sin. Okay? You understand? Yes? Okay. So, go back to 1 John chapter 5. Okay. So, knowing this, verse 18 again, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, who has the Holy Ghost, who is of the church of the living God. Okay. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Right there. Okay. It's talking about being a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay. All, all right. Don't let anyone tell you that if you are uh, if you are a so-called Christian that you are to stop sinning and that you don't sin anymore. Okay? No, 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 no. Because remember, sin has been uh, relegated to what the flesh. Okay? The flesh is sinful. While our spirit and soul dwell within the skin suit, you know, the flesh, we are going to sin. All right? 
and anyone telling you that they don't sin every day, you're a liar. You're a liar. That means for one day, you are just like God, meaning that you don't, didn't sin. Get over yourself. Okay? That doesn't mean that you embrace it and just go on sinning that grace may abound. Romans chapter 6, people. Okay? But let's continue. Okay? We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Born of God, born again, having the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost within those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, have God living within them, and God is not going to lead you on to sin. Okay? But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, born again, of the church of the living God, keepeth himself, you know, being separate than, holy, that kind of stuff. And that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. And hath given us an understanding in verse 20. Okay? Again, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within you, going to sanctify your life. Not at gunpoint. But, don't do this. Don't do that. Stay away from that. Here. Live according to this. Okay? Okay? But we know. You and I have the church of the living God. We know that the whole world, what? Lieth in wickedness. Okay? We know that? Yes, we do. Now. Now. I'm going to share with you something. This is a 10 strategies of manipulation by the media by one Naom Komsky. If you have not heard of this man, Naom Komsky, he's a, he's a MIT linguist, uh, uh, quite a smart guy. He has spoken at Georgetown University, Jesuit University, okay? Um, Noam Komsky is of the world. Noam Komsky is one of those who is a practitioner, if you will, of predictive programming. You've got to remember, the Jesuits have hoped that their plans are going to succeed, or else they wouldn't make them public. It's a daring act, but you've got to remember, the devil Jesuits are daring men. And when you think about this thing of predictive programming, predictive, talking about things that are coming uh, to pass within the future. Programming, programming people, okay? Perfect example. George Orwell's 1984. All right? There's no way that guy came up with that from himself. I believe that George Orwell was manifested with many devils or um, many devils were in him and those devils were telling him what they planned to do in the future because when you read 1984 and look outside there, there there's, that's too similar and there is no such thing as a coincidence, okay? I do not recommend that you listen to Noam Komsky, but there again what Noam Komsky talks about here in these 10 strategies of manipulation by the media, um, they're happening. Predictive programming. The devil telling people what he is going to do and then brings them to pass. Okay? Predictive programming. Just like the uh, through Hollywood, okay, of the zombie apocalypse. Stuff like that. Independence Day, the movie, the Hollywood movie, about E.T., okay? 
It's all predictive programming. Okay? You have to remember that. But pay attention to what this guy says. Again, I'm not recommending Noam Komsky whatsoever. I'm not. But you're going to find this very interesting with what this guy talked about. Now, when this came about, I do not know. Okay? Um, this is called 10 Strategies of Manipulation by Noam Komsky. Okay? It's 10 Strategies of Manipulation by the Media. Go ahead and Google this thing on your own time if you wish to look for it, to look at it for yourself. So, going to read this word by word for you and just pay attention. This is a man who is not of the Church of the Living God. Listen to what he's saying. Again, this guy is an agent of the devil. I believe so. And the devil is boldly telling you lost people out there what he is doing to you. He's being allowed to do this to you for judgment, okay? Pay attention. Renowned, renowned critic and always MIT linguist Noam Komsky, one of the classic voices of intellectual dissent in the, dissent in the last decade, has compiled a list of the 10 most common and effective strategies resorted to by the agendas hidden to establish a manipulation of the population through the media. Now see again, this guy talks about like many of these so-called truthers do. They'll talk about manipulation, okay? They'll talk about these things. Some of them will even mention people like the Freemasons, but they'll stop there. They won't mention the Jesuit order. They won't tie these things into Roman Catholicism. And even if some will tie some of this into Roman Catholicism, they'll leave out Satan. Okay? Satan. Satan is the little g-god of this world. He has been given that for judgment against this world by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You have to understand that. All right, but this guy he's done so much about this uh, you know about uh, propaganda and so on and so forth doesn't talk about the Jesuits he's actually preached preached at a Jesuit University Georgetown I believe it was okay as far as I know he was even trained trained by Jesuits okay but he leaves out the Jesuit order he leaves out Roman Catholicism he leaves out Satan. That uh, one guy, Alex Jones, comes out with a lot of truth. Yes, he does. He doesn't uh, talk about the Jesuit order. He doesn't talk about Roman Catholicism. Doesn't talk about Satan. Satan, you know, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, that is Satan's church. That is Satan's religion, Roman Catholicism. Okay. It sounds good. You're going to hear this if I quit. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> but you, this is good, right? But it's what they leave out, you have to remember. Now, let, I'll shut up. Let's, let's continue this. Historically, the media have proven highly effective to mold public opinion. World War II, the German um, propaganda ads. Thanks to the media, para, paraphernalia and propaganda have been created or destroyed social movements, justified wars, tempered financial crisis, spurred on some other ideological currents, and even given the phenomena phenomenon of the of media as producers of reality within the collective psyche and that's just what the Jesuits do see he doesn't tie in the Jesuit order Roman Catholicism and the devil with this okay they kind of leave that separate kind of like what Satan does he'll speak what 90% truth but 10 of it is poison a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, see? 
but how to detect the most common strategies for understanding these psychological tools which surely we participate? Fortunately, Komsky has been given the task of synthesizing, remember that, and ex synthesizing and expose those pra these practices, some more obvious and more sophisticated, but apparently all equally effective and, from a certain point of view, demeaning. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Encourage stupidity. Promote a sense of guilt. Promote distraction. Or construct artificial problems that magically solve them are just some of these tactics. He's making reference to what is known as the Hegelian principle. Thesis. Create a problem. Antithesis. Come up with the uh, solutions to the problem. Or make a point. Counterpoint. Synthesis. The end result. Okay? So, control the argument, the counter argument, to come out with their desired um, outcome. The Hegelian principle, which is what the Jesuit order does. Okay? Uh, Hegel. Hegelian principle. I had a book on Hegel. Um, he was a philosopher. Beware of philosophy. Okay, um, I threw it out. Uh, you read enough of Hagel and make your nose bleed. But um, remember, Hagel was of the Illuminati. Illuminati founded by Weissop, who was a Jesuit. Okay, okay, and Komsky, uh, I'm sure, is one way or another tied onto the Illuminati. And the Illuminati is was founded by the Jesuits, people. Okay? See, the, and even Jones and all these guys will talk about the Illuminati. Why sup was a Jesuit? Okay? Okay? Beware of these people who do not tie in Mystery Babylon. Beware of those people who do that. Okay? Beware of that. And I'm sure Noam Komsky thinking that he's up there and we're all bottom feeders, esoteric and esoteric he speaks in, one that is for those who are in the know and those of us bottom feeders, you know, the common people. Uh, I would not be surprised at all to learn that Noam Komsky himself is a Jesuit or at least a Freemason, at the very least. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get on with these 10 strategies of manipulation. Okay, and here, let me let me do this, okay? okay. Let me see. Okay. All right. See that? Pause it and read it. Okay, can you see the whole thing? Oh no? Okay. There you go. Pause that and read it. Okay? Pause that and read it. Do a Google search for this. Okay, so let's go on. Number one, the strategy of distraction. Distraction. Oh, and think about that, brethren, how these devils are very good at distraction, aren't they? They want to take your attention away from doing what the Lord has called you on to. And they want you to pay attention to them. Look at me. Look at me. The devils who attack me personally. That's what they want. They want to take me, my attention away from doing what the Lord has called me on to and pay attention to them and their attacks. Okay? The strategy of distraction. The primary element of social control is the strategy of distraction, which is to di divert public attention from important issues and changes determined by the political and economic elites, like the Jesuits, and the Bilderbergers, the Illuminati, and uh, Gates of Hell, and all them uh, devils, okay? All working for the Jesuit order, by the way. 
by the technique of flood or flooding continuous distractions and insignificant information. Like the psychological operation that is going on right now. What are they pulling your attention away from? Oh, I'll leave that to you to figure that one out. It should be pretty obvious. Distraction strategy is also essential to prevent the public interest in the essential knowledge in the area of the science, falsely so called, economics, psychology, neurobiology, and cyb cybernetics. Quote, Maintaining, maintaining public attention diverted away from the real social problems, captivated by matters of no real importance. Keep the public busy, 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 no time to think. Back to farm and other animals, quote from text, silent weapons for quiet war. Two, now here's where he talks about the Hegelian principle. Create problems then offer solutions. <laughs> Just like the Jesuit order has done with the uh, psychological operation that is being implemented right now as we speak. Okay? Two, create problems then offer solutions. This method is also called problem reaction solution. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Hegelian principle. Right there. Problem, reaction, solution. And those who put that forth, the Jesuit order, are seeking to bring about their own solution. Manipulating. But see, Mr. Komsky, who works for the Jesuits, I'm sure, absolutely, um, wouldn't say that kind of stuff. They'll give you just this kind of stuff to divert your attention. All the while leaving out the most important factors. Remember that. Don't forget that. It creates a problem, a situation referred to cause some reaction in the audience. So this is the principle of the steps that you want to accept. This is the Hegelian principle. For example, let it unfold and intensely let it unfold and intensify urban violence and arrange for bloody attacks in order that the public is the applicants is the applicants security laws and policies to the detriment of freedom or get a load of this Create an economic crisis to accept it as necessary evil, retreat of social rights, and the dismantling of public services. Wow, does that sound familiar? See, boldly rubbing it in your face as to what they're doing. But see, you lost people are so taken by the devil. You need to be set free by our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the answer? What is the answer? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Incredible. Number three, the gradual strategy. Acceptance to an unacceptable degree. Just apply it gradually. Dropper for consecutive years. That is how they, radical, they radically new socioeconomic conditions, neoliberalism, were imposed during the 1980s and 90s, 1990s. The minimal state, privatization, precariousness, flexibility, massive unemployment, wages, and do not guarantee a descent income, so many changes that have brought about 
a revolution if they had been applied once, little by little. Satan couldn't come, couldn't boldly come in with all his heresies right at once because the church of the living God would be like, hey, 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 whoa, whoa. Gradually, gradually conditioning people to accept the lie. It, it happens gradually. See, the populace is at the point right now where Satan, through his army, the Jesuit order and his church, Roman Catholicism, can tell you lost people anything and you would believe it. Prove it to you? Okay. The psychological operation that is happening right now, but even before all that, again, a perfect example, the toilet paper famine. The toilet paper famine. I personally believe that the Jesuit orders, the Jesuit orders said, let's, let's see. Let us test the people. Let's see how stupid they are. Let, them tell, let us tell them that there's going to be a famine of toilet paper. And if you're in my nation and you remember the toilet paper famine, you would go to stores and all these racks were empty. I guarantee you, somewhere in the Vatican, when they saw the success of the toilet paper famine, I bet you them Jesuits were rolling on the floor laughing. I bet you that. And they come about it gradually. Look at how they polluted everything and injected this heresy of the Trinity from the inception of the Roman Catholic Church. That's the first thing they went at. To introduce to the masses <laughs> one God <woo -hoo, laughs> comprised of three divine persons. They're one God, but they're, they're three persons. And then you call them on that. According to the scripture, it's like, no, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God, in three persons. That, that's insane. But see, little by little. Um, he injects this stuff. Because if he did it boldly right away, the church of the living God would have been like, hey, wait a minute. But now, the lost people out there are so conditioned, brethren. It's an uphill battle. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Okay? Get a load of this one. Number four. The strategy of, de of deferring Another way to accept an unpopular decision is to present it as painful and necessary. <laughs> this is coming from one of their own. Rubbing it in your face what they're doing. All the while I'm telling you, this is what we're going to do to you, but you people are going to believe it because you, why? Because you rejected God and his word. Gaining public acceptance at the time for future application. <laughs> it is easier to accept that a future sacrifice of immediate slaughter. First, because the effort is not used immediately. Then, because the public masses is always the tendency to accept naive, naively that everything will be better tomorrow. And that the sacrifice required may be avoided. Put two and two together in, in this and come up with four, not 36. Okay. This gives the public more time to get used to the idea of change and accept it with resignation when the time comes. Think of how arrogant and brazen these Jesuits are. To use a guy like this, Noam Komsky, to bluntly say, okay, this is what we're going to do to you. But see, because y'all have rejected the true Lord, the true God, our Father, Jesus Christ, 
and have rejected his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. But want a, a, to want a Bible that's going to uh, pacify you in your sins. And we know the whole world lieth in wickedness. Number five. Go to the public as a little child. Most of the advertising to the public, general public uses speech, argument, people, and particularly children's intonation, often close to the weakness, as if the viewer were a little child or a, ment or a mentally deficient. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, you've noticed that, that the media talks to you like you're stupid. The harder one tries to deceive the viewer look, the harder one tries to deceive the viewer look, the more it tends to adapt, adopt a tone infantizing, infantilizing, infantilizing. The more it tends to adopt a tone of infantilizing. Why? Quote. If one goes to a person as if she had the age of 12 years or less, then because of suggestion, she tends with a certain probability that a response or reaction also devoid of a critical sense as a person 12 years or younger. C. Silent weapons for a quiet war. Okay? And it's interesting because our Lord says that we are to go to him as children, dependent upon our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Satan, on the other hand, wants uh, all of you to be children so he can lie to you and destroy you. Six, use the emotional side more than the reflection. Fox News is really good at this, okay? Fox News. Yes, I've used, uh, for example, certain things from Fox News. But that's, see, that's what Fox News does. They touch the emotion and try to get someone away from, uh, away from thinking and go into the scripture, but act in emotion, okay? That's what Fox News is good for. That's why you you really gotta you really gotta be careful what you're putting before your eyes, dear friend. Making use of the emotional aspect is a classic technique for causing a short circus on rational analysis. And finally, and finally to the critical sense of the individual. And see, this is what the devils here on YouTube do as well. They try to get to you to irritate you so that you will react. So that you will, again, take your attention away from what the Lord has called you on to doing and make you focus on them. This is exactly what they do. See? Is that because these devils and, uh, and these tactics all have one link onto their little G God, their father, the devil? Mm hmm. Furthermore, the use of emotional register to open the door to the unconscious for implantation or, graphic, or grafting ideas, desires, fears, and anxieties, compulsions, or induced behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, brethren. Yes. Today is the 14th, by the way. Today is the 14th. Have you read the proverb for today? Number seven. Keep the public in ignorance and mediocrity. Making the public incapable of understanding the technologies and methods used to control and enslavement. Quote, the quality of education given to the lower social classes must be the poor and mediocre 
must be the poor and mediocre as possible so that the gap of ignorance it plans among the lower classes and upper classes is and remains impossible to attain for the lower classes. See, Silent Weapons for a Quiet War. I, I don't know what that book is. I'm assuming it's one of his own. But right there, he's addressing the esoteric and the esoteric. A form of speaking and teaching, one for the elite and one for the non-elite. Okay? Okay? Division. Division. While as pertaining to salvation today, if you are of the church of the living God, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, if you're a Gentile, it doesn't matter if your color is chartreuse, whatever, okay? Male or female, as pertaining to salvation, you're all one in Christ Jesus. Culturally, that's a different story because God is a God of distinction. But see, he's addressing about the elite and non-elite. Okay? What he is promoting, what he is talking about. Being one of the elites himself, having pity on us bottom feeders. Yeah. Eight. To encourage the public to be complacent with mediocrity. Complacent. Promote the public to believe that the fact is fashionable to be stupid, vulgar, and uneducated. I tell you the fact that unless you repent of your self-righteousness and come to the Lord Jesus Christ broken and sorrowful because it's your fault that he went to the cross and died and in fear of him who can put you in hell because you reject his cure and cry out to him call upon the name of the Lord for his mercy and that he saves you not that you save yourself because one day you're walking along and you say oh, oh I believe and therefore you no 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 see they call that stupid what do they call that they call that stupid vulgar and uneducated God in six days created the heaven and the earth six days he created on the seventh day he rested there again proving that there are seven dispensations within the scriptures okay but see satan through the jesuit order through his church roman catholicism through all his, all the daughters of roman catholicism okay over the years taught you that we're here because of millions and trillions, billions of years of evolution. And they have conditioned you lost people to believe the truth that God in six days created everything according to the scriptures. Do you see? But now, a lot of you want to continue in your ignorance. Willfully ignorant, as Peter taught. Number nine, self-blame strengthen. Get a load of this one. Get a load of this one. Pay attention to this. To let individual blame for their misfortune, turning it inward because of the failure of their intelligence, their abilities, or their efforts. So, instead of rebelling against the economic system, the individual auto- Desvialida <laughs> and guilt. I'm going to spell this for you because I can't pronounce this. A U T O D E S V A L I D A, whatever that means, I don't know, and guilt, which creates a depression, one of whose effects is to inhibit its action, and without action, there is no revolution. See, instead of turning that sorrow into repentance and going on to the Lord to fix it, no, that sorrow crushes and leaves them down. See, godly sorrow is there to turn you on to the one who can save you. 
But no, a lot of these people who have sorrow will twist that and turn it into a perverse form of self-glorification. Isn't that something? I've run into so many people, brethren, who when you when you talk to them about um, you know, hey, you're a sinner, okay? There's none righteous, no, not one. Okay, you're not a good person, you can't save yourself. They will they'll yeah, I know, I know. Okay. Go to the Lord Jesus Christ. But no. What will they do? Some will be like, Well, I'll just do better. They can save themselves, see. That's what they think. So they'll believe and all of a sudden, whoo, right? Not accepting their brokenness, but saying, I can do better. Instead of going to the Lord, who can fix it for you. Okay? Can save you, I should say. Excuse me. But there again, some in that state will turn that and glorify themselves through their, through their you know, whatever. I've run into uh, people like that are so sorrowful but yet they glorify themselves from uh, through their sorrow I'm no good I'm this I'm that things are just that's a form of self-glorification you don't think I can't figure that out dear friend well you don't think that wasn't revealed. Number 10. Getting to know the individuals better than they know themselves. Ah. Such as the Jesuits do. Gatherers of information. They send in their, their um, adversaries, their infiltrators to worm in so they can gather information. Over the past 50 years, advances of accelerated science, falsely so called, has generated a group, uh, generated a growing gap between public knowledge and those owned and operated by dominant elites. Thanks to biology, neurobiology, and applied psychology, the system has enjoyed a sophisticated understanding of human beings, both uh, psych physically and psychologically. The system has gotten better acquainted with the common man more than he knows himself. This means that, in most cases, the system exerts greater control and greater power over individuals greater than that of individuals about themselves. And everything, now, uh, like I said, I got this Google search, so you can look this up and read this for yourself, uh, 10 Strategies of Manipulation by the Media by Noam Komsky, okay? What he's talking about is exactly what the Jesuit, orders, uh, Jesuit order does and has done and is doing. Okay. Okay. Now this was going to be used in a video that I um, been putting together here, just a short one. Uh, like I said, I still might do two today. Don't know, but regardless. So if you see this today and an, uh, another video doesn't come out the same day, okay. <laughs> but go to the proverb for today. Go to the proverb for today. You gotta remember, there is no such thing as coincidence. There is no such thing as coincidence. Certain things happen, certain things coming back. Proverbs 14, verses 6 on to verse 7. Uh, on to uh, uh, 17, excuse me. Proverbs 14, verses 6 on to verse 17. A scorner seeketh wisdom. Fear the Lord. Scorner seeketh, seeketh wisdom. And findeth it not. 
But knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. You know, departing from evil. Knowledge is easy unto him that departs from evil. Evil, while someone who is a scorner seeks knowledge, uh, seeks wisdom, and findeth it not. Ooh, kind of like trying to infiltrate. Go from the presence of a foolish man. The fool has said in his heart, "There is no God." A foolish man is one who behaves as if there is no God. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. There are those out there who have the lips of knowledge, yes. Noam Komsky. But he's a foolish man. He lives as if there is no God. He is his own God. I bet you if you would go up to that devil Noam Komsky, who is, like I said, brazenly rubbing it in your face as to what they are doing to you. I bet you if you would go up to him and, and talk to you, uh, him about Jesus, he'd give you this condescending look like, oh, you dummy, you believe in such nonsense. That's what he would say, I bet you. I bet you. I'm not a betting man. Verse 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Get a load of that. Remember, wisdom, fear of the Lord, okay, is equated with the fear of the Lord, okay? If you have the fear of the Lord, that come, brings prudence. Prudence, wisdom are linked, okay? And wisdom is linked onto the fear of the Lord. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. How do you understand your way? How do you depart from things that are in your way? How, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You lost people out there. Satan has you. You want the truth? You want to, you want to get away from these things? You want, to, you want your life to change? Come to the Lord on his terms. Broken of your self-righteousness. Sorry that it's your fault that you put him there. And fear him. Cry out to him. Call upon the name of God. May he have mercy on you and save you. Okay? The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin. Such as these easy believism devils who want you to have peace with your sin. They mock sin. They act like devils and then they try to defend themselves. Well, God knows my heart. We have liberty to behave like this. Shut your mouth, you devil. But among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and the stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The heart knows his own bitterness, and that, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. I've talked about this before in other videos. I believe that stranger is being uh, referencing unto the Lord, um, coming into those who are of a broken heart. Okay? And deep down, you know the plagues of your own heart. And your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who doth know it? Or who can know it? Okay? The house of the wicked shall be overthrown. Uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years, okay? Uh, Satan's kingdom that he's been working for centuries to... Um, put into uh, play won't even last seven years. This is who you devils are following. <laughs> yeah, good luck. But the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
Are your ways actually according to the Scripture as the Lord would have you to walk? How do you know? How would you know? Unless you search the Scriptures daily. What are these things we saw? Do you spend time with our Lord in prayer? A little bit more than 30 seconds? Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. Talking about distraction. Okay? Distract you. Laugh for a little while. Tell a few jokes. Have fun. Never mind. Go, go, uh, intoxicate yourself with the things of the world while ignoring the big elephant that's in the living room. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Because, think about those of you who escape through getting drunk and doing drugs. The high comes down. One of these days you're going to have to deal with reality. And what is that reality? Unless you repent of your self-righteousness and come to our Lord Jesus Christ on His terms, unless He save you, you're going to go to hell. You understand? There's no gray area. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's either or. You're either saved of the church of the living God or you're going to hell with the devil. That's the reality, dear friend. 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. You will reap what you sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Read that sometime. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple, like we just looked at, believeth every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Remember, prudence in Scripture is equated unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and understanding to depart from evil, okay? A wise man feareth. Fear of the Lord. Okay? You know, Paul in the Pauline epistles never spake outside of you fearing the Lord. Okay? It's fearing man. John, who talks about there is no fear in love, he's talking about the fear of man, the fear of the world. Okay? It's not talking against the fear of the Lord, dear people. Devils want you not to fear the Lord. Don't forget that, please. Please don't forget that. When you hear these so-called Christians saying, how are you supposed to love one, someone that you're afraid of? No. You can't love the Lord unless you fear Him. And if any of you out there call yourself a Christian, <laughs> Christian, and not of the church of the living God, if you say, well, I don't fear the Lord, you're lost. You're not saved if you have no fear of the Lord. How can you, how can you love the Lord unless you fear Him? How? Explain that one to me, dear friend. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. Brother Bobby, again, put that in the description box about Job. Bless your heart, brother. Praying for you. Oh, you see this, brother? Uh, send me your number again, please. Thank you. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. I was going to use this in a, a kind of an expository video, Luke 12, 1 through 12, is what the next video is going to be. Maybe not today, but the next one, Lord willing. I'll, I'll link this video in it if it doesn't come today. It probably won't, but it could. We'll see. The fool rageth and is confident. A lot of these devils, they're not afraid. Brave men. 
But a lot of them will uh, cower at the because they're afraid of a woman. It's called crazy brave. Fool rageth and is confident. Not afraid of anything. But yet, those who are the fool, it says here, but the fool, the one who says in his heart there is no God, rageth. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And is confident. Confident in their foolishness. Confident in their rage. I've met these devils who fear nothing. But in reality, they are the most greatest of all cowards. You know why? Because they don't want to have the Lord deal with their own hearts. They're afraid to walk in the truth. Some of them who are actual Jesuit coadjutors and Jesuits themselves, yeah, you have a lot to fear of man. Don't you? Because what would happen if you turned against your order and started speaking out about your order? They'd probably kill you. They probably would, especially right now. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if one of these devils, oh, think about it. Wouldn't it be just glory to God if one of these devils would turn on the Jesuit order, would get out of that and truly, truly be saved of our Lord Jesus Christ? Oh. And there are several of you out there who I believe are Jesuits. I truly believe you are. You know who you are. Okay? Is it worth it? Well, you think on your... You, some of you actually really do think on your deathbed after serving the Jesuit order all your life, you think you're going to be on your deathbed and repent? And the Lord save you on your deathbed after a lifetime serving the devil? After hearing the true gospel, sitting amongst the saved? Incredible. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. incredible. Verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. <laughs> Can't control their temper. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Be ye angry and sin not. That's what Paul says. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. Don't go to bed angry. Because every day is a gift precious gift for you to serve the Lord in whatever capacity he has called you on to. Whatever it is. And those <laughs> and those who are soon angry dealeth foolishly. They live as if there is no God. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Not by me, but by the Lord. You know, those of you devils out there who use your talents to serve the devil in his kingdom, what a shame, what a waste. What a waste. What a waste to go and attack people like that. What a waste. What is that going to what is that going to profit you in the end? And see trying to trying to appeal to these devils is futile, useless. Let them alone. They are the blind leaders of the blind. But See, still, that, that doesn't take away from the fact that what could have been. 
I know. You, you, you can't go on what could have been. Yeah, I get that. We all get that. But uh, nonetheless. Nonetheless. How many of you out there, not talking to you, my brothers or sisters, how many of you out there are wasting time What are you afraid of? What is it going to profit you in the end in what you are doing? Preaching a false gospel. All you do is attack. You can't teach anything. And the example that you live by is that of the world. poor creatures here. Can I tell you the truth? There are there are like I've said I, I believe you know there are those out there who I truly believe are actual Jesuits. If a Jesuit were truly to repent truly get out of that system, out of that, and have the Lord uh, protect them long enough to speak the truth. Would that help at the present time? So long as it would help one person, which is a spirit, soul, and body, then you have your fruit. You have your fruit. Okay, today is the 14th. Like I said, there may be another video coming today. If not, it will be on the morrow. Okay, if not, leave it up to the Lord. He, the Lord was pretty specific with me about one a day. I'll leave it up to Him. Okay, but I am going to upload this one. Thank you, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Thank you. We pray for so many of you. And again, I have to reiterate this. I might not be in contact with many of you. There are some of those of you who have uh, contacted me and I have yet to get, uh, get back to. Um, please be patient with yourself. And those whom I used to speak with, do not think that you are forgotten. See, we're a praying household here. Now there are some that we used to pray for that we don't anymore. Certain specific devils, okay? We don't pray for them anymore, obviously. But um, there are those out there who we, we were, are very concerned for and love very much and pray for daily still to this day. To this day. Don't forget that. Don't forget that, okay? Don't forget to pray for one another, brother. I love you. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video, okay?